Hello everyone! As you seem to have enjoyed my yesterday's videos about Vasily Ivanchuk, I decided to show you one more game played by this uh, genius. And, uh, well, uh, Ivanchuk already won uh, three Linearis titles, and uh, this game was played in 1996. Uh, it was the 58th annual Huguvens uh, tournament in the Vikansi Netherlands, and uh, Ivanchuk won first place. It was a clear win. Uh, the tournament featured 14 of the strongest players in the world. Uh, Ivanchuk won uh, one full point ahead of Isvanathan Anand and uh, one and a half point uh, ahead of third place Veselin Topalov. And uh, this is considered uh, to be one of the greatest games ever played and it, it features one move that is by some considered to be the, the greatest move ever played. So let's see this game. Oh and yeah, and Ivanchuk was undefeated uh, for the entire tournament. Uh, Ivanchuk is white and he is playing Alexei Shirov. Uh, we have d4 d5, c4, uh, we have c6, the Slav, and knight to c3, knight to f6, knight to f3, e6, uh, we have bishop to g5, d captures on c4, and we have e4, the Botvinnik variation, uh, which is one of the sharpest. Uh, we have b5, uh, we have e5, and uh, well, now it seems that uh, Shirov is losing a piece, but uh, he's really not. He plays h6, attacking the bishop. Uh, we have bishop to h4, and now g5, attacking the bishop one more time. So now, now the knight isn't pinned anymore, and uh, we have knight captures on g5, a temporary peace sacrifice. Uh, h captures on g5, and bishop captures on g5. And okay, the knight is still pinned, and uh, Ivanchuk will recapture his piece. Uh, Shiro plays knight b to d7, and we have e captures on f6. And bishop to b7. It's, uh, the Shirov is playing bishop to b7 to assume this beautiful diagonal for his light squared bishop. Uh, we have g3 by Ivanchuk, and uh, Shirov pushes c5. And uh, this is, uh, it seems like a good move. It's uh, preparing to, to capture this uh, d4 pawn, and also uh, he has a discovered attack on this rook on h1. So there's only one way, one way to stop both threats. Uh, Ivanchuk plays d5. Uh, we have queen to b6 and uh, bishop to g2. Uh, queen side castle and uh, king side castle by Ivanchuk. And we have b4 attacking this knight on c3. Uh, Ivanchuk plays knight to a4. We have queen to b5 and we have a3. And uh, well, Ivanchuk of course wants to open this a file for his rook so he can attack this a7 pawn and get some play on the queen side. Uh, but this allows e capture some d5. Uh, we have a capture some b4 and uh, c captures on b4 and okay now Ivanchuk does have this open file for his rook and uh, here Ivanchuk uh, comes up with such a brilliant masterpiece plan this is uh, this is insane uh, he plays bishop to e3 and uh, the, with this move he's attacking this a7 pawn and okay this is easily defended uh, Shura plays knight to c5 and, uh, well, he doesn't really mind uh, after the knight captures that this rook will be targeting uh, a7 as if, if knight captures, bishop captures and everything is well, the a7 pawn is defended. Uh, but here comes uh, Ivanchuk's brilliant idea. He plays a queen to g4 with check. And, uh, well, black does have a couple of moves to consider here. Uh, definitely he doesn't want to play something like king to c7 as he will, this will be met with bishop to f4 check and uh, the black king is coming down the board. Uh, so after queen to g4, uh, he can consider something like king to b8, uh, but uh, this would actually run into queen to d4, and uh, this is attacking this knight three times, and if the knight moves well, then this uh, a7 pawn is going down with check. For example, if knight captures, the queen captures on a7 with check, and after king to c7, rook captures on a4, and this is winning for white. So after king to g4, the best move for Shirov here was actually to play queen to d7 and block the check this way. Uh, but this is some, somewhat counterintuitive as uh, this leaves this uh, knight on c5 unprotected as it's uh, already attacked twice. So Shirov tried a different idea. He tried rook to d7. And uh, well, this is now the, the main punishing line uh, Ivanchuk prepared. He plays queen to g7. And uh, this is a, a wonderful move. This is so, so crushing. Uh, what's the idea behind uh, queen to g7? Well, obviously, he's attacking this rook on h8. The rook can't really be defended. Uh, but the bishop, of course, can capture the queen. Uh, but the whole idea is that this bishop is actually protecting the c5 knight. And the bishop can't capture the queen and still protect the c5 knight. 
so sure of capture the queen. We have bishop captures uh, on g7 and f captures on g7. With an attack on the rook on h8. So this has to be protected. Rook to g8. And uh, now Ivanchuk plays knight captures on c5. And uh, now he's attacking this rook on d7. Also the bishop on b7. Which could be, well, kind of... Uh, kind of bad for black as this bishop is already <laughs> on g2 uh, the rook is attacking on a7 and uh, well black has to come up with a move probably best would be to to simply move this rook from from d7 and uh, get, get him out of harm's way uh, but sure plays d4 uh, he's attacking this bishop here and also creating a very powerful pawn center uh, and okay, this does open up this bishop diagonal so uh, Ivanchuk captures it, bishop captures on b7 with check uh, we have rook capture some b7 and knight capture some b7 and uh, Shirov does not recapture the knight uh, just yet. Uh, he plays queen to b6 uh, He would much rather capture this bishop on e3 and if uh, Ivanchuk stops this then he will cap capture the knight uh, But Ivanchuk plays uh, bishop captures on d4 uh, attacking the queen now we have queen captures on d4 and we have rook f to d1 with an attack on the queen uh, Shirov plays uh, queen captures on b2, we have knight to d6 with check, uh, king to b8, uh, and now rook d to b1, now with an attack on the queen and also on the b4 pawn after the queen moves, uh, we have queen captures on g7, <coughs> finally getting rid of that uh, annoying pawn, uh, rook captures on b4 with check, uh, we have king to c7, and now rook to a6. And this is with a very, very powerful threat of rook to b7 check, uh, also with a threat on uh, on f7. So Shirov stops this, he plays rook to b8, uh, but this allows Ivanchuk to play rook captures on a7 with check. And there is no way for uh, Shirov to defend this rook anymore. He plays king captures on d6, we have rook captures on b8, uh, we have queen to g4. Uh, rook, of course, checks on d8, we have king to c6, and now rook to a1, not allowing any queen d1 ideas. And, uh, well, after this rook to a1 move, uh, Shurov resigned the game. As uh, he does have this uh, past c pawn, but th there is no way to take advantage of this, as if uh, the queen ever moves uh, from defending c8, simply rook to c8 check picks it up. And if Shurov would try to, to maybe <clears throat> attack the rook, uh, then simply rook to d2. And there is no way to stop uh, white from, from playing something like rook to c1 and then simply doubling up on the c file. And uh, white will white will give up both rooks for the queen and then simply win an easily won endgame with three pawns to one. So yeah, uh, but in this position after rook to a1, sure resigned and uh, Ivanchuk won this brilliant game. And uh, like I said, he won the entire tournament. He was undefeated, uh, five wins and uh, eight draws, no no losses. So yeah, uh, de definitely a, a, quite an achievement uh, for the genius Ivanchuk. So yeah, uh, that's it for this game. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Tony Mowat, uh, Nirajay Kashyap, and uh, John Caldera for a contribution to my channel. Uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And uh, as usual, you can check all my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching uh, and uh, I'll see you soon.